Now the next picture is a gorgeous landscape. This is Scotney Castle in Lamberhurst. It's in Kent in England and I've been there several times. It's a beautiful place. It's a ruin as you can see. Uh, there's a lot of crumbling going on up here. But so I think it adds to the charm. One other thing I'll just mention before we start is, you see there's a drain pipe down there. Well, that's pretty ugly, so that won't be included on my picture. Let me show you how I set this up as a square drawing and the paper grid that we're going to work from. I've already started the ball rolling because it takes quite a long time to do something like this, but what I want to show you is a few things that will help you to understand how square drawing works in a landscape. Ignore the half inch grid for the moment. I'll bring that into play in a little while. So let me just first of all show you how we operate the just the top part of this. It's difficult for me to get it all in, so I'm hoping that to, to get close enough for you to see it. Now, let's do this first of all, this area here. And we've got to do, the, the way to do this is to imagine where the lines end. Now you can see I've already done the top one, but just here, this is where this line here crosses there. It's about there, judge it like that. Put that in there. Now let's just do the first line, which is there. I'm gonna put my finger on the line so you can see what I'm looking at. We go up to there like that and then drop it down to there. We don't want to quite reach the bottom there. So this is where that's going to cross in a minute. And the other thing is, let's go from down to here, which is about different, the, line, it's the distance from the lines to the edge of the subject, which is there. So we want it to be about there, which means if I draw a line there, coming from there to there, It's going to be pretty accurate. Got it? Now, a couple of little things. Let's put just another a second line in here. And then we can complete this tower. If you imagine that as an imaginary line coming down there, it would be, and we've also got this to help us as well. So we put that in there like that. Okay, and we've got another pane of glass which comes there, and another one which comes there. And then we've got this area that comes over there. So let's just put that in. And you see it sticks out a little bit from there, so it will come down like that. And all we're looking for really is the rough shape because we can redraw this. Now we've got one other comes in here like that. Then we've got that like that and then you've got this you can just about see under there but it's like that like that and like that. So now what we've got to do is redraw it slightly quite a lot of artistic license with something like this as long as you've got the rough idea of where it goes now what I'd also do there is just erase it this is why I use a 2B pencil because it does erase really well but I don't want to get rid of it altogether now we've got now we've got the idea we can then redraw it you see why this takes quite a long time but it's still quicker and more accurate to do it this way than if you were doing it freehand. Now that, that's got to be fairly accurate. And it's come down into there like that. And then there. And we can pick up this line. Here, now you might say, well, actually, how accurate do you really need to be? Well, 
you don't have to be spot on. The idea of something like this is to be, use a little bit of artistic license and draw. Now this is just slightly out now, I can just see it. You see where that should be there now, just again. Another advantage I have to mention now is all the mistakes or all the adjustments you make are on this and not on your drawing paper or pastel paper or watercolour paper. You can, all the mistakes can be made here because once you've got this accurate, which I'm pretty happy with that, then you can then transfer that through to your reference. Now when we come to this chimney, this is where, if you want, you can then bring the other grid in. I could have done it with that, but really it's better to it, not to use the grid unless you have to. But now you can see what we've got here. We've got, if we draw a line here, now this time you don't necessarily have to measure it unless you want to, because this is not critical. Landscapes, not unlike animals or human portraits, are not critical. Now you can see now what we've got another line to help us. So now we come down here and that follows through to there. And we've got, we can put our cross piece in. Be as fussy as you like with this. And then you've got another line that comes down here on the other side of that centre line I've got like that and that drops a bit now it drops pretty good because we're going to be putting another line up there in a minute that's this one okay let's just finish this off the line now this is where we've got to bring that down at a fairly sharp angle like that there we are there was our chimney coming down from here we can see that that comes into there, into there, and into there, right? Now, this is the next bit, and let's just pull that back again, because we don't really need that now. Next line I'm going to do is that one. Now, we know it's got F, and it's so it's this is the area where we need this area to be done. And again, if you want to draw the lines, you can, but I don't think I'm going to bother here because uh, I'm going to put that in now it's not quite it's not quite you no know, it's just over halfway isn't it if you looked at that yeah, it's just over halfway so let's just put it there for the moment just to an indicator it's up to about halfway there and then we've got that and now this comes down here clearing this line like that now it looks a bit rough but this is the way I would draw and you, if you were doing freehand, you'd draw it the same way as well, like that. Then you could just fill it in later. Now we want that little bit at the top there. And then we can just re then maybe make that just a little bit more. Like that. Again, if you wanted to, you could always erase it and do what I did just before with that other one. Draw that in there. This has got a shadow on it. So this, this is critical or will be critical when and if I want to produce this as a painting, which in fact I will be doing later on. So put a little bit of detail in like that. Now here we've got that coming down to there. And we've got another little bit jutting out. We can put all that in. Like that and that comes down to there and then it meets another line which I've actually got let me show you that line too yeah so make sure you can see all this that line there I've already done that it's part of my other drawing now I'm a bit cack handed here it's because I have to show you but normally I'd have this facing me now we can put this line in. This is the one. Now if I hadn't got a line there, if I hadn't got that line across there, I wouldn't have any idea how much slope there was on that. 
So let's just show you how that works. Now, it starts off here, which is about there. It comes and crosses the line about there. It actually drops slightly spot on that line and drops below that line. So basically what we've got is that. Let's see how accurate I am. Now, I could you say, well, do we need to be as accurate as that? Well, you do, really, because you see, if you look at this line, see, that's the same as that. If you get it all twisted round, you're not going to, it's not going to be accurate at all. Now, another thing I want to show you here is over here. You notice that on the reference photograph, we've got a bend here. Now, I personally don't like that. And this is where you can use your artistic license. Now, if I was going to copy that exactly, I'd copy it like that and I'd make it bend out like that and so on. But I don't like that. So I'm going to straighten this up and I'm going to make it come from there down. And as an artist, you've got the option. You can do that or you can do it as you see it there. It's entirely up to you. Bring that all the way down and it will meet the bottom like that. Now I personally prefer that to that. It's another thing you can do. Now there's another interesting thing here. We've got a little window here. Now we've got to isolate that and again I don't think it's really necessary to use the smaller grids. I don't, I very rarely do use the small grids, but what I would do here is this. Let me show you how I do that. If we imagine that's halfway, isn't it? So that would be about there. So if we just drop that just above halfway, because I think it's just a, the top of that is just above halfway like that. And then we come down here and that's, judge, judge it, how far you think that is from there. Well, it's about there. So just do that, just a very light line. Now here, it's almost directly under this one, which is this one here, this one here. You see what I mean? In, in relation to the uh, others. So if we were to do that, it's not critical that this is actually pinpoint accurate. But it's not going to be far out by the time I finish it. Like that. Now, how do you do that? Well, what you do then, look at it again, think, yep, yeah, I like that. So that's the top, I agreed. Come down here. Like I said, it doesn't have to be spot on. But then, and then erase the lines. Now, no one is ever going to see what you're doing here. What they're going to be is absolutely amazed that you've managed to get that window as accurate as that. There's still a couple more windows because it's been, I'm spending a lot of time on this, but it's important that I show you. Another interesting thing here is this one here, right? So how do we do that? Same same idea. It's almost on the line, which is handy here because it's on that line. Now, how far below that line? About there. So do the same again. Draw a line. And we know that the actual edge of that is down there. So let's bring that down as well to where I, I would consider it to be. And, and on the other side, like that. And, and the distance between here and here would be about there. We've also got to think that this is an angle. Remember, we, we all discussed that once. So the angle is going to be like that. All right. That's the bottom. Okay, now what about the uh, the roof? Well, the roof would come just slightly that side of that line. So that comes down to there. The other line comes down to there. And then we've got the going back to there. And now you can probably now draw that in. And that comes down to there. That goes up to there. You see how much easier this is. Again, we've got the same angle. We've got to be careful of the angles. Don't make it straight. And 
and then we come down like that. Now let's just rub that out again. Use your rubber. It doesn't matter how scruffy this is because this is not your drawing. But now you can look at it again and think, right, I'm going to be a bit more accurate now with my drawing. Because I know what I'm looking for. I know my angles. Make that just a tiny bit longer. Because if you look at that and look at that, there's not a lot of gap between them. But it overhangs. And then down quite sharp to there and to there. There we are. Now, isn't that good? Let me do one more window for you and then I'll call it a day. This is one is the larger of the two windows. Now you can see here we've got the same idea again. Let's look at that and do the same sketch. I did before. We've, we've, it's very handy because that line is running almost exactly on the line of the window. So we only have to worry about that one, which is about there. So do again, very light sketch. And it drops slightly below. So it drops there. Now that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Am I happy with that? I think I am. Because if we look at the other window, there that's almost spot on the halfway mark so if we were say that that's about there so that was where the next window would be and because that would also be like that and we, uh, you know the same angle as that we're looking at that it drops a little below that one so that's like that the great thing about this is you're only doing one square at a time this is the advantage. Now, the other thing, now look at this, that's a, a bigger gap than that would be, which means I'm out somewhere. I think probably what I am, I'm slightly out here. Now, let me pull that back down there. And that one can come out just a little bit further over there, which means that one can come a bit further over there, which means the angle between there and there is better. See how it works? know that that is the angle there. There you go. There we are. And I think I've done enough. A little bit more to do, but I won't bother with that. But what I'll do is a moment, I'm going to finish this off and then I'll show you all of the square drawings that I've done. The uh, human portrait, the German Shepherd and the landscape all together. I'll just finish it off because it won't take me long to do that. And then you could have a look at all three together. Well, there we are. Three very different subjects drawn out using my square drawing grid system. The lines drawings I presented to you here will be turned into pastel pencil paintings and will appear on a member's site in due course. I look forward to meeting up with you again very soon. I'm Colin Bradley. Bye for now.